Hey Alan, welcome to my kitchen. Um, so here's my story about Open. Um, it starts with me being a pretty successful photographer, but um, with, um, with a failing business model. And I was a pretty successful closed photographer. In fact, my business relied on me being closed. It relied on me having a very scarce product. Uh, that product was my, my photographs. And the only way you could get to them was to buy magazines and newspapers and so on. Um, of course, you know, as the internet grew and as, uh, as the media landscape changed and became more digital, um, it became very difficult for me to keep my product closed. People would be able to find it on the internet, they'd be able to distribute it freely and copy it um, in a moment, you know. So, I mean, this is, not a, this is, a, this is going to be not a new story at all to most people. In fact, it's, it's ancient history, I'm, I've no doubt. But um, there, was, there was a moment, an epiphanous moment, when I had photographed an actor called who we know is Heath Ledger, um, and I pursued someone who was um, who was sharing my images, my images, sharing the images that I'd made of Heath uh, with with her friends on her blog, and she hadn't asked my permission. She just stuck them on there, and I'd found this blog, you know, and uh, and so I I went after this person, um, didn't know who they were, and said, you know. You're stealing my pictures, and uh, this is ruining my business. Taking food from the table of my children, and etc. etc. You know, would you steal my car? Would you steal? Entirely disproportionate, but nevertheless, I was a person under huge pressure, as I say, with a failing business model, a burning business model, and I had no way of breaking out of it. But uh, to cut a long story short, um, th this this person that was sharing these images wasn't making any money out of them. She was sharing them with her friends, and she wasn't um, a big-time publisher. She was a 14-year-old girl in, the, in, in Midwest America, and she was devastated when she received this email, and she was terrified. And at that moment, um, at that moment, I felt incredibly guilty and thought that this wasn't why I'd got into the business. Now, some time later, I mean, I, I said that I was, it was fine for her to use the images, of course it was, and uh, so long as she put my name on it and didn't sell them, you know, I, I had to make a livelihood from selling my images. Um, so, and she was fine with that, and, um, there, you know, I, I actually shared some more pictures with her, because, um, because by this time I had, I'd ridden the guilt train and arrived at Guiltsville, and so, um, I, uh, you know, I, I wanted to make her feel better and uh, and not to tell her parents that I, in fact, um, uh, you know, effectively uh, bullied her online. And so I suddenly started to see a bunch of traffic coming to my portfolio, to my website. Um, and, you know, I didn't make this connection at the time. It's only in afterwards that I've constructed this narrative and now understand what was happening. You know, she wasn't just any little girl. She was a Heath Ledger geek. And people came to her because they trusted her Heath Ledger knowledge. And, um, and she became a hub. Her website, it turns out, was a hub for all the people that are into, um, you know, all her, her community that are into Heath Ledger. And she pointed them all at me. And, um, you know, it's, it's now I understand this dynamic. It's only now that I'm beginning to understand that we can reverse engineer this. You know, this is a very niche audience. And they, they gathered around that geek. And when she pointed to me and said, he's trustworthy, you can go and look at his stuff, then it, it, um, it paid to be open, quite frankly. And so, um, you know, there's, there's a, that, that story ran and ran. My business model has changed fundamentally. Uh, and what I do has changed as well. You know, I don't just think of myself anymore as being um, a, a supplier of, of, of images that, you know, the, those technical barriers to entry to, uh, to be a photographer have gone now. Um, you don't have to do a three-year degree or ten-year apprenticeship in order to work out how to use a camera or, or work in a dark room. That's just um, ancient history again, I'm afraid. And so, and so, it's been very useful for me to sort of reconstruct that and rethink about how I can use those dynamics and what is it that I actually have to offer. And so, when I come now to teach the ancient and arcane history and mysteries of photography and the dark room, etc., um, I uh, I apply some of these ideas. I, I run a course and I've written some open courses. You know, by thinking open and by doing open with my with my practice, it changed fundamentally, and I found that I had a whole shed load, a portfolio of different skills that I could um, that I could use that I ultimately could live by, live off, um, other than just making photographs. 
And so um, as I now teach this stuff, you know, I seemed appropriate because teaching education, you know, everybody's going through this sort of the seismic changes that are going on in the media landscape, in, in society in general, in the connected society in general. Um, so I, it seemed appropriate to, to rethink my role as a teacher as well. I mean, is that all I do? Teach in a classroom? Is that my product? Used to be the photographs. Is it now this scarce in the classroom stuff? And so I opened the classes out as well. And you know what? Tens of thousands of people came to the classes. Um, 35, the, the record um, period of over 10 weeks was 35,000 people came to class to find out what we were, what it was all about. Um, so that again was sort of very exciting. So there's two open stories for you, Alan. Um, there are a bunch more, and, um, and we know, but I don't want to bore people, but um, there's one from ancient history as me as a photographer. There's one from me as, um, for, as a teacher. Um, here's one from uh, applying this in business. So a friend of mine um, who was trying to sell shoes, couldn't sell the shoes that were in her garage uh, at cost price. That was £35, G GB pounds, great you know, um, sterling. Couldn't sell them at cost price. And so I showed her how she could think of herself, rather than being a seller of shoes, a vendor, a seller, she could think of herself as being a hub. She could think of herself as being a club. And as soon as she started to think of herself as being a club, someone that people came to, because these particular sorts of shoes had a history and they had lots of different niche followings. And so we found all these followings, we found out where they lived. And she brought them together online. And she became this expert. She was never posited herself as a seller of shoes, only as an expert. Now, uh, cut to, uh, to the end of that story, or the end of it, 18 months later, uh, there's a 12-week wait now for a pair of shoes, and they're £145 each. And I, I just heard, heard only last week that the, the company that um, actually manufactures these shoes is now buying her website as their official distributor. So uh, that's three. There's three for the price of one. What more can I do? And do you know what? I'm going to give you another one. How about this? Here's, it gets even better. So here's a speculative one. So the, um, the stuff that we did with the blog, with the pictures, with my, my pictures, um, just kind of opened them up by licensing them differently. That was how I opened up those pictures, my photographs. I said, oh, it's okay to put them on your blog. I used a Creative Commons license. Now I'm just embarking on another project which is where I'm actively seeking remixes. So it's, it's actually, I'm actively seeking people who are going to chop up what I've done and we are going to be co-authors of it and we're going to make a whole new thing. And I hope that, you're, that you or my other co-remixes, co as it were, uh, are going to make a better thing, something better than I could ever have done. The classes, the classes that I teach, because lots of people remix the stuff, they're way better than I could have done my own. And I'm going to see if this will happen with my photographs. So... Um, Maybe I'll get back to you, Alan, and let you know how, uh, how that goes. All right, good luck, mate.